dynamically. And anything that you can construct in Sketchpad can itself be a master. So this, he's taken these two building blocks, the flange and the rivet, made it into a master, and now he can create instances from it. Well, if this isn't home cooking, I don't know what is. <laughs> the Let's try the, uh, the second segment. Well, I think he goes to go and show some other things, but... Uh, okay, oh, this is a nice video, actually. Yeah, yeah this is a really nice video. This is, so, this is how this, so this is how our system looks. At, uh, at, uh, I think it's this is, yeah. I'm actually with Xerox Parks. World's first painting program, done no, by... No, but it was, okay, this first painting program, 68. I designed it uh, in the spring of uh, 72, and Steve well, Purcell... I realize it was actually 68, but never, never, never mind. Maybe it was first color. That most amazing person uh, did this while he was, a, I think he was a sophomore at Stanford at this time. And I'm not sure he'd ever written a program before in his life. I never asked anybody that I hired whether they programmed or not. So I usually didn't want to know. <laughs> And uh, the other thing you notice is that the control here is being done by a character recognizer, and that was done by none other than John Schock. So most of the things that Mac, Mac Payne, Space War practically drove small talk into existence. We wanted Space War to be half a page. And here's some early animation from, I think, around August done on the old character generator. And around this time, we moved into our uh, playpen downstairs across the street at uh, what used to be the Singer Building. This piece is called The Happy Hacker. There's the organ that's playing the piece. This is an excerpt from a movie made about computer music. The star, Rachel, has played piano since she was five years old. So it's being captured. She's played in a in accompaniment. Now she's going to play along with the accompaniment. Now this is sort of our idea of what a convivial tool really means. I didn't know how to talk about all the stuff we did at Park. There are many years of work afterwards. And in fact, I didn't know how to really talk about the Dino Book of the Future. I still think that uh, as with Bush's original vision, if somebody just sat down and, and, and implemented what Bush had wanted in 1945 and didn't try and add any extra features, we would like it today. I think the same thing is true about what we wanted for the Dino Book. If we only had what we wanted then in one machine, we would like it today. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that the Dino Book covered everything. One of the things that I didn't anticipate was what networks really do to you. And that is they change the whole environment that you're in. They don't just hook environments to get... Of 
years of investigations on how people learn and uh, she kind of studied different fields of learning but mostly his ideas were based on the kind of current then and actually I'm not sure what happened to these ideas I'm not sure if it's you know, it was overtaking or it's current the ideas of uh, like one of the kind of earliest and very influential cognitive, cognitive scientists, cognitive psychologist the American Jerome Bruner and uh, Jerome Bruner basically was kind of took a feelings of uh, the most famous child psychologist or let's say the practitioner of developmental development psychology of the 20th century, Jean Piaget. So Piaget kind of theorized, postulated, as probably you remember, that children, as, we, as, as their mental capacities develop, go through a number of distinct intellectual stages. And he called them the kinesthetic stage, the visual stage, and the symbolic stage. But the difference was that for Piaget, each stage only exists for a particular period, only to be completely replaced by a new stage. So Brunner kind of suggested that, in fact, the separate mentalities, right, the kind of separate ways of cognition, where only one of them is linguistic, right, in fact, do not, do not replace, but edit. So he basically said that, you know, adults also have with different types of cognition. Uh, later on, I think Howard Gardner published this book, I think later when he talked about, I think six, five or six, five the yeah, yeah, is it, yeah, five. So, and I think so, so people are discovering that beyond you know, language and beyond images, you know, there are a number of other, let's say, apostolate, there are a number of kind of cognitive representational systems. But you know, this is open to debate, right? Basically, there's this debate going on in quantum psychology, in the 70s, where some people said, well, we always have our systems, they just have certain mani mani manifestations, and internally, the brain kind of uh, maps all representations into the language, <coughs> into sort of this linguistic representation, and other people said, no, all the systems are independent systems, so mental images is another kind of uh, intellectual kind of cognitive system, and uh, and, you know, and, and the part of like part of human intelligence that has multiple multiple cognitions, right? Well, anyway, so to go back to Brunner, he basically also gave him slightly different names with three mentalities: inactive, iconic, and symbolic. What was the second? Iconic. Inactive, iconic, and symbolic, right? A little bit reminds of first, right? Uh, so, key interpretation is theory was that we use the interface, and I'll explain in a second what this means mean, right? So the case is, okay, if we basically go to have this computer, the computer should really kind of become this meta medium, and you know, maybe replace, really become, right, you kind of, like the way the computers are for us today, right, our kind of intimate companions and uh, information processors. You know, we should really, you know, put all these different intelligences to work. So let's have kind of use the interface, which would appeal and would allow us to use all these different types of cognition. So in contrast to a command line interface, which is not accessible for children, and you know, also it was important for Keith, he said, you know, if we're going to make, you guys all try to be computer for adults. That's why nobody can use it. Let's make computer for children. If we can make a computer for like five-year-olds, then you know, <laughs> It's going to work, which is also interesting. <laughs> now you have all these iPhones, right? Anyway. Okay, but he meant well, right? So in contrast to a command line interface, which is not accessible for children, it forces the adult to use only symbolic mentality, right? Because everything only goes for language, right? You type these commands. Let's make a new interface, which would also make use of emotive, emotive, uh, and iconic mentalities. So he also, he also drew a number of studies on creativity in math, science, music, and art, and other areas that suggested to him that initial creative work, initial creative work in the human mind, is done mostly in iconic mentality and also in active, in active kind of manipulation. Right? So he, so basically, he came to a conclusion.